Today, we've got more than just high-speed chases. We've got fist flying. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. throws a punch at Kyle Busch in NASCAR's latest showdown. So why did fist fly, and what does this really mean for their rivalry? So in today's episode, we'll uncover the full story. Lap 1 at North Wilkesboro Speedway started with drama. Kyle Busch hit the outside wall, and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. found himself in the middle of a three-wide situation. The question on everyone's mind was whether Stenhouse left Busch enough room. Opinions varied, but one thing was clear. There wasn't any contact between the cars. Despite this, Busch was furious. Just one lap later, Busch retaliated by hitting Stenhouse, causing Stenhouse to crash into the wall, ending his race. Stenhouse was understandably upset and parked in Bush's pit stall, leading to confusion among Bush's RCR pit crew. Due to the track's old design, there was no easy way out, so Stenhouse was stuck for the rest of the 200-lap race. He had plenty of time to think about how to confront Bush once the race was over. As soon as the race finished, Stenhouse, now in street clothes, wasted no time. He approached Bush, who was walking back to his hauler. The two exchanged heated words, with Stenhouse insisting that he didn't touch Bush and urging him to review the replay. Bush disagreed, leading to a physical confrontation. Stenhouse threw the first punches, and the two ended up wrestling on the ground. Security intervened, subduing Stenhouse, while Bush grappled with members of Stenhouse's crew. Eventually, the situation was brought under control, but not without some harsh words exchanged. Stenhouse later told FS1 that Bush was probably just frustrated with his own performance. I know he's frustrated because he doesn't run near as good as he used to, and I understand that. You know, we're in one clip. Bush admitted his struggles, shouting, "I suck just as bad as you." Bring it! I don't give a f just as bad as you. I understand. Let's go. The incident at North Wilkesboro Speedway, where Bush retaliated against Stenhouse during an exhibition race has raised questions about Bush's current state and his illustrious career. Kyle Bush, a name synonymous with success in NASCAR, has had a rough couple of weeks that have left many questioning his legacy. The altercation with Stenhouse Jr. was not an isolated event. It followed a disappointing performance at Darlington, where Bush crashed on lap two of the Truck Series race and finished 28th on Sunday. The clash between Bush and Stenhouse Jr. was a culmination of high tensions on the track. With both drivers fighting for position in a challenging environment, the pressure was palpable. Moving away from the controversy, the race at North Wilkesboro itself was a significant event. Joey Logano's victory marked his first NASCAR Cup Series win in over a year. Although an exhibition race, the win was nonetheless a lucrative achievement with a million-dollar prize at stake. The victory was also a testament to Ford's recent resurgence in the sport. With five Fords finishing in the top ten at Darlington and another strong showing at North Wilkesboro, the manufacturer has demonstrated its competitive edge. The success of Ford and drivers like Logano adds a new layer of excitement to the NASCAR series. It disrupts the dominance of teams like Hendrick Motorsports and Joe Gibbs Racing, offering a fresh story for fans to follow. At the forefront was Joey Logano, who secured a commanding victory, leading 199 out of the 200 laps. This win is particularly significant for Logano, marking his first NASCAR Cup Series win in over a year. It's a momentous occasion for Ford fans as well, as the manufacturer demonstrated its prowess with three Fords finishing in the top five. Denny Hamlin driving a Toyota was the only competitor who came close to challenging Logano's lead. However, he fell short of catching the two-time cup champion by the race's end. Chris Buescher, another notable driver, continued his strong performance from Kansas and Darlington, securing a third-place finish at North Wilkesboro. Kyle Larson's performance was nothing short of remarkable, having qualified fifth in the Indianapolis 500 just hours before the race. Larson had not practiced a single lap at North Wilkesboro all weekend. Ryan Blaney, representing Team Penske, also finished in the top five, adding to Ford's successful night. Bubba Wallace, who raced his way into the all-star race through the open, finished with an impressive sixth place run. Noah Gregson, for the second consecutive year, won the fan vote and finished 11th. His victory in the fan vote was somewhat unexpected, 
considering the strong campaigns from other drivers like Alex Bowman and Carson Hosevar. The weekend's big story, however, revolved around the tires. Goodyear introduced a softer, faster tire designed to wear out more quickly, providing teams with an optional tire for practice sessions. Reports of blistering on these tires after 40 laps echoed issues seen at Bristol, highlighting the ongoing challenges teams face in managing tire wear and performance. The night race under cooler temperatures set the stage for teams to make critical adjustments to their cars. The focus was on the option tires, which were introduced to add a strategic element to the race. However, the anticipated performance differentiation between the option tires and the harder prime tires did not materialize as expected. Throughout the first half of the race, spanning 90 laps, five drivers opted for the option tires. These tires were designed to provide a quick advantage, allowing drivers to fire off to a lead. Yet as the laps progressed, the prime tires did not exhibit the expected increase in performance. The lap times for both tire options remained comparable, negating the strategic advantage and leading to a uniformity that was not intended. This outcome was a letdown for many as the promise of tire wear and the dynamic of comers and goers did not unfold. Despite this, the option tire cannot be deemed a failure. Denny Hamlin earlier in the weekend praised the tire, calling it fantastic. This sentiment suggests that the direction of Goodyear and NASCAR are taking with tire development is positive, but the events of the night indicate a need for a more aggressive approach. This year's All-Star Race, with its repaved surface, offered more excitement and competitive racing than the previous year's event on the worn-out track. Looking ahead, the hope is that Goodyear will continue to innovate with the option tire, perhaps introducing it at tracks like Martinsville and Phoenix during the playoffs. The tire's durability and performance at North Wilkesboro have proven that it can withstand the rigors of racing and its introduction to other tracks could enhance the competitive nature of the races. As Goodyear works towards developing a softer, more aggressive tire, the NASCAR community watches with eager anticipation. The potential for improved racing dynamics and strategy is immense. The all-star race at North Wilkesboro may have ended, but the discussions and implications of the tire performance will resonate throughout the season, influencing future races and strategies. The introduction of the option tire was meant to add a layer of strategy to the race, but it fell short of expectations. Despite this, the race did see some passing and use of multiple grooves, though not to the extent many had hoped for. The event, while not living up to its full potential, still provided moments of excitement and showcased the skill of the drivers and the adaptability of the teams. But now, what do you have to say about this? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure to like this video and also subscribe to the channel for more NASCAR content.